Good day. Welcome to Punk the Punk Pop or sorry, yeah, Punk Pop Review Channel. That's what I'm calling this channel, I think. Um, I might change it. I don't really know. This is my first video. Um, and yeah, I'm probably just most of my videos are just going to be about either they're just going to be either album reviews or stuff that kind of has to do with music. I don't really know. Mostly album reviews though. I might just change it up to talk about certain things that have to do with music, music and stuff. Um, but, but yeah, mostly pop punk, as I said, because the channel is called Pop Punk Review. But because that's mostly what I listen to is pop punk. But you might can I might consider some other things like metalcore or like I don't know. I I do like metal quite a bit, so I could put in some metal uh, things in here or screamo and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so today's is a good day because um, I'm reviewing Say It Like You Mean It by The Starting Line, which is probably definitely one of my, definitely my top 10 albums of all time, or at least top 10 pop punk albums of all time. Um, very, very, very good album. I, ugh, it's just so good, so good. Yeah, and that's why we're talking about today. That's why it's my first video. I had to start off strong, you know. Um, so it was made in 2002, signed off by uh, Drive Thru uh, Records uh, and yeah, that, that's that's what they signed off that album to, but they like they changed record labels quite a bit throughout the years, um, and uh, they they've been around since nineteen ninety nine, but this was their first album. This was their debut album that they uh, like that they released. I know that they had they have they had an, they had an EP um, before before this. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I don't. I didn't listen. I. I mean, I, I've listened to it. But I, don't, I don't. really remember that much about it. But I do remember that the two of the songs that were on the, um, that were on that that were on their EP made it onto the album, which was interesting. Um, but yeah. So the, but the uh, yeah. So this was their first. This was their, like they didn't. I don't think they signed that their EP onto like a record label. They just kind of made it because they felt like it, and they just recorded it because they did. Um, and yeah, so, uh, like, I, oh no, I do remember what it was called, it was called With Hopes of Starting Over, that's what it was called, that's what their EP was called, um, yeah, and, yeah, I don't know, I think, okay, what I'm gonna be doing with most of my album reviews is probably, I'm gonna rank the songs, um, I think I'll just do that, I think I'm gonna do that, um, so, like, for most of my album reviews, okay, so, number one, number one, in my opinion, the best song on the on the album is Hello Houston. I feel like it has overall just, it's just overall a very good song. I really enjoyed the bass on it in the beginning. Like they have, um, I'll, I'll be talking about the bass later later on because uh, the singer, he, he was he's the one who played the bass and stuff. So I'll talk about more of that about that more about that later on. But yeah, and I feel like it just has a very good like tone. The lyrics are pretty good. I'm gonna be honest though, this whole album is kind of just about girls like. Every single song in this album is just pretty much about girls, and you'll see that like with with the names of the songs, you'll kind of notice that. Um, and then number two is almost there, going no more, going nowhere. It's just a really, really good song. I, it's just very, it just, I don't know, I don't really know what to say. It's just, it's just, it's just a really good song. Number three is up and go. Uh, that's the first song in the record. It's kind of, I think honestly, I feel like they should have made a, they should this song should have gotten. As popular as the best of me got um yeah i don't know just mostly because i i bet that i my i think that the best of me probably got as popular as it did because they made a music video for it and it just got like all over mtv and stuff and it was all over the radio very big song if, if you didn't know um in like 2002 2003 or like yeah 2003 pretty much mostly because i don't think the album really got all that popular at like right off the bat um but yeah, that was like a very, very, very big song for like pop punk. If you don't know that song, then you're probably stupid. I'm sorry. If you like pop punk, you you have to know that song. If you don't listen to pop punk, then I don't. Then you probably it's fine. That you don't know. I don't really care. Um, but if you think you like pop punk and you don't know that song, then you don't like pop punk. I'm sorry, but it's just not a thing. You just don't like. You you're just not a true pop punker. You know what I mean? I'm just kidding. Um, but. Yeah, I feel like if they had made a music video for that song, it would have gotten very. It would have gotten popular because I honestly I feel like it has a very similar tone to the best of me, or like just a, it's just similar. I don't know, but it's like better. I don't really know how to explain it. Um, 
And number four is Leaving, which they they made they made a, they they did make a music video for that song. That's the only other song on the album that they made a music video for. But I think that got popular ish. I mean, it was on MTV and stuff, but it didn't really get that popular again. Up, think about it. Up and go, leaving. It's just about girls leaving him. Poor, poor guy. The girls n never wanted him. I'm just kidding. Uh, number five is a good night's sleep. I really like this song because mostly because of the um, uh, just like it just kind of has a very good like it just grab so it starts off kind of like softly and then it gets more to like a peak and then it just kind of just goes like and it just kind of just it just hit it just hits you in a certain way and I think that it's just a very over overall like maybe the song overall isn't very good but just when you just like when you just hear the beginning of that song you're like oh yeah oh yeah um <laughs> but yeah um and then uh number six given the chance just a good just a good song number seven left coast envy that one also has some pretty good bass in it which is like just the thing that exists in the song i don't know i just really like the bass on that song as well uh eight saddest girl story again girls <laughs> number nine the drama summer again just girls and the drama the drama summer I really enjoy that song. I think it has a really good place in the album because, um, or I'm really glad that they put that in the album. In the album because, it kind of, it's definitely a lot different than the other songs. It has more of like a mellow sort of thing. It's most of the song is just like an acoustic guitar. Like, I don't know. It's I I really enjoy it. It's towards the end of the album. It's the second to last song, so I feel like it kind of sets a nice mood for the end of the album. And it, it's just I don't know. I just I just I just enjoy the song. It's kind of easy to. It's easy to know the lyrics too, and it's just a song you can jam to, you know. It's just a it's just a good song. Um, and then number ten, decisions, decisions, just a good song overall. I don't really know what to say. Um, Eleven, this ride is the last song on the album. It kind of sets, definitely closes the album appropriately. Um, and then, okay, I'm sorry if if you, okay, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself. Where's the best of me? Why have you not put the best of me on yet? Well, I don't know. I just don't like this song. I'm sorry. It's just not... It's overrated as heck. I'm just going to say that right now. It's overrated, and it just doesn't... I don't know. Because I feel like it's, it's just... There's so much better... There's a lot of much better songs on this album. Go, don't get me wrong. The best of me is a good song. I do enjoy it. I like, how, I, I like the song in general. But I really just feel like that song got extremely popular but the album i mean the album got popular don't don't get me wrong it was definitely like a big album but i just feel like that was like one of the only i don't know i just i just feel like it's it just it just i don't know i guess i'm just mostly biased because <laughs> i don't know because in my opinion the rest of the album is just like just as good i guess as that song um but i don't know i guess it just got popular mostly because again the music video um and MTV and stuff, but uh, number thirteen is and then this is the last song, Cheek to Cheek. I th don't get me wrong, I love every single song on this album. There's not a single song on this album I hate. I like Cheek to Cheek. It's just I don't know. I just had to put it at the end because the beginning is just too long. It doesn't go into the actual chorus soon enough. It's just not. I don't know. I just had to put it last. No, like I have no hate against it at all. It's just I had to put it last. Um, and yeah, that's those are all the songs ranked. Um, but, like, I guess, like I said earlier, my favorite, my favorite thing about this album is probably just the bass, because, uh, the guy, the singer, he, like, he, he writes most of our songs, and I felt like he was really able to, like, relate the bass very well to, like, the, just, like, the song, just the songs in general, and I don't know, because it has just, like, just, it's just more prominent, the bass is more, like, prominent than, like, in other pop punk albums, and I just, I like that, I don't really know. Um, and he's a very talented bass player. You'll see him live. He's just like, he's just jamming. I don't know. He, it's crazy. I, I, I mean, I'm learning. I mean, so, so I, I don't really play an instrument that, that well. I mean, I'm learning bass. I'm trying to learn bass. So I appreciate him. That's He's part of the reason why I'm trying to learn bass. Because I'm trying to learn a lot of this. I'm trying to l learn some of the songs in this album on bass at the moment. So, yeah. And an another thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, this is screaming. So... Obviously, this isn't a Screamo album, obviously, because it's not. But one thing that I kind of really noticed about, like, pop-punk albums from, like, 2002 to, like, 2004, or, like, 2004, that's really it. Um, 
like I just noticed like that like there's like just like kind of, there's not screaming. It's nothing like a day to remember or anything where you're just like or like under oath or ever or yeah. It's not like a full on like scream just like in the background or like it doesn't, it's not like a full on scream. Like he's not like just like full on screaming words into the mic. He's just in like a couple songs like in cheek to cheek. He just like kind of like screams in the background but it's like muffled and it's like but it's like soft like i don't know if you know uh if you know pierce the veil because they're a pretty popular screamo band like if you notice how like on like they kind of like he kind of like muffles his screaming a bit a bit it's kind of like that kind of screaming but but like soft and just in the background and it's i don't know i kind of like that like take this to your grave has that like in a couple of their songs and by Fall Out Boy, Take Us to Your Grave by Fall Out Boy. And same thing with Newfound Glory, their earlier albums like had like Sticks and Stones that like that had like a little bit of screaming in the background. Like def definitely not in every single song. Just like three or four song like two or three songs really on just on the albums. They they had just like kinda of in the background just screaming and I, I don't know. Honestly I like that because it kinda of just sets a mood for me, like just like having screaming like screaming in the background. Okay, well sorry, if you don't no, you're probably confused if I'm just saying, like, screaming, because it just sounds like he's just going, ah! but no, he's not. It's just, like, it's kind of like, like, metalcore screaming or whatever, but, like, like, just screamo, but in the background, um, and it's not really a prominent feature, but it just kind of, like, has a certain, like, mood. It just kind of, like, I don't really know how to explain it, like, kind of sad, but, like, just, like, a little bit just, like, I don't really know. I don't really know how to explain it. This is bad. I just, just, like kind of like desperate almost but like sadly desperate and you just like i don't really know how to explain it it's similar to if you know thursday like they're they're a metalcore band but their screams are a bit different like and it just kind of hits hits you a certain way um I, that's kind of how i feel about the screaming and like these pop punk albums but yeah like i said earlier i can really i can really relate these this album to take this to your grave and sticks and stones because they came out like around the same time and I feel like this kind of this kind of type of pop punk really only lasted for like probably up to I don't know probably like three years, um, but don't get me wrong like pop punk is like pop punk has been has been places like oh my god pop punk has changed so much like it's just gone through so many different phases. I'll probably I'm definitely gonna do have to do a video on that <laughs> like the just like the different things of pop punk I don't know, but I kind of like identify like like don't get me wrong there's like 2002 had like there's like some some types of pop punk overlapped like i'm not gonna lie like like for example like some 41 and stuff like they're completely different than like fall out boy and new F and, and uh and like new Fine glory and like say and the starting line and stuff but um they kind of overlapped but they were both pop punk but i don't really know at the time i feel like this wasn't really considered really like people didn't really talk about it as pop punk it was kind of just like oh yeah this is like pop i guess this is more just like pop rock but now we call it pop punk um i guess i don't really know if it was called pop punk back then but yeah i really i can really relate this album overall just to like there's a lot of albums that are similar to this so if you know take this to your grave which a lot of people do know that album because it's both it is by fallout boy and it's their first it's their debut album don't get me wrong okay i know all you, if, if there's like some random Fall Out Boy addict out here watching this, he's like, ah, that's not their first album. Well, guess what? I know it's not their first album, but it's their debut album because it was the first album that was signed onto a record label. So shut up. <sighs> God. Sorry. I Honestly, I'm going to be honest. I don't like Fall Out Boy that much. I really only like, uh, I really only like Take This To Your Grave and yeah, and the, and the album after that, um, I don't even know what it's called, Under The Tree, Corkscrew something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really, I'm, I don't listen to their second album religiously, but I know, I, I, I mean, I know the album, I know most of the songs, but yeah, I don't know, I re Take This To Your Grave is just a better Fall Out Boy's album, and I don't really like the rest of Fall Out Boy, so yeah, and yeah, I think the next album, I think the next video, I'm also going to do an album review, I'm going to review Chroma by Cartel, which I'm going to, I'm just going to consider it 2000s pop rock. I mean, it's kind of pop punk, but I'm just going to consider it 2000s pop rock. So if you know Cartel, Chroma by, if you know the album Chroma by T Cartel, listen in. And if you don't, also listen in for the next video because maybe I'll convince you to listen to it. Goodbye.